Russia has signed cooperation agreements with 17 African nations to strengthen trade and investment ties around food provision, fighting terrorism and improving security and boosting agriculture, among others. The Kremlin says it has also settled 90% of some financial agreements and obligations. Isabel Nakiria has more. Russia says it's opening up new grain routes to ensure food reaches Africa on time so that grain trading is not dependent on the UK and US insurance companies who may be unable to insure ships traversing the Black Sea now that Russia's withdrawn from the grain deal. One of the options being considered is exporting directly to Turkey with payments managed by Qatar. Russia exited the Black Sea Grain Initiative earlier in the month, saying neither it nor Africa was benefiting. The first shipments of 50,000 tons of grain will go to six African countries. But the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres hit back at Russia's offer, saying a handful of donations to some countries won't correct the dramatic impact of the grain deal's collapse. While South Africa isn't one of the recipients, its delegates are optimistic about what's been offered at the summit. I've witnessed uh, contracts being signed for real. I witnessed the Russian uh, delegations, most of them saying, when can we start work? Russia has also written off 23 billion US dollars of Africa's debts, saying it's eager to grow business on the continent. The Russian Export Center will support domestic companies in the country to open up new investment opportunities in Africa. We have got some little oil which we want to, to export as crude but also refine for the East African uh, market. Then we have got the pipeline to the ocean for the crude oil in which we are involved with Total, the French company, and some Chinese companies, but Russian companies can also come in and invest in that East African crude pipeline. Russia has also committed to supplying and upgrading military hardware in Africa and offered help fighting terrorism and mediating conflicts. Though some analysts say conflicts like those in Sudan can only be solved internally. Moscow says it's concerned about the situation in Niger and is watching it keenly. But on Friday, Russian mercenary leader Prigozhin, who was seen at the summit, said he supported the coup and offered Wagner's services to the self-appointed new leader. I don't think the summit has effective tools to participate in resolving Sudan's crisis. Most of the active initiatives now are related to the United States. Russia can only take a neutral stance and call on the two warring factions to stop the war. And in recent history, it hasn't had a role in mediating to stop an armed conflict. Russia has offered to invest in nuclear energy in Africa too. The first plant is still due to be constructed in Egypt, where progress has stalled since Russia first signed a deal with Cairo in 2008. The foreign ministry says threats by the West will not deter it from doing business with Africa and warned against interfering in their discussions. Isabel Nakiria, CGTN, St. Petersburg. Well, let's dig a little deeper here. Pumlani Majosi, a South African analyst and senior fellow at the African Liberty, is joining us live via Zoom from Johannesburg. Thank you for joining us on the program. What's your take on the outcomes of this summit? Have the two sides, Russia and African leaders, come out with what they expected? Well, thank you so much for inviting me to the show. I think this was a very, very important summit to take place. And I do believe that there were some benefits out of it for Africa, as well as for Russia itself. As we all know that Russia right now is really being isolated um, in, in, in many parts of the world. So um, I, I strongly believe that what Africa needs is um, uh, more investment, uh, more trade uh, partnerships, uh, more trade uh, partners, 
And I think from a trade, from a long-term plan, long term plan to, to, bolster, to bolster trade with Russia, there was a good outcome from that. And also as well, the right of, uh, of, of, the, of, the, of the debt as well, we can see that as a positive, though even there as well, I don't see that as a major solution to South Africa's social economic problems, but it is a plus that that debt will be, um, Africa's debt uh, will be written off by Russia, so I would say that from a um, from a um, there were some positives from the summit. One thing I should emph emphasize, though, is that the, the free grain to the six countries um, it may look uh, as if it's a good thing. At the end of the day, this is more of Russia trying to to sort of buy or get uh, you know uh, 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 allies within the African continent. It's not a long term solution. What is more important is to bolster trade between Russia and Africa. And I think from that aspect, there were some good um, you know, benefits both for, for Russia and Africa as well. So the attendance this year was just a fraction of what it was during the last uh, such summit. Do you think some African leaders might have missed out on an opportunity here to engage with Russia on important issues? I would argue that yes, they did miss uh, that opportunity. But I strongly believe that there has to be an engagement with Russia, right? There has, be, there has to be an engagement both from a, an, an economic perspective as well as from a geopolitical perspective as well. As we all know that we all want the war between Russia and Ukraine to end. And at this point, it's destabilized the world. Uh, the prices has, uh, have skyrocketed. It has destabilized markets. Um, globally, so um, for, for that there are leaders who couldn't go there and make the case for 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 for, for the Russia-Ukraine war to to end, and also to discuss trade-related matters. I think it, it it was a miss from those leaders. There has to be an engagement with Russia going forward, uh, not only specifically with the with this Russia-Ukraine war, but also to create a, a geopolitical sort of a stable environment that will allow um, a good trade, um, stable trade, uh, as well as stable uh, diplomatic relations as well over the long term.